Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we want to have a look at special effects. So called proximity and skin effect. Both are normally parasitic and not intended, but on the other side unavoidable either. We will explain the basics to those effects and partly how to analyze and quantize by the program Quickfield. We want to observe different kind of conductors and arrangements and how they impact on parameters like loss, magnetic field and shielding. For the proximity effect we want to separate two different situations. When the neighbor currents are in the same or in the different direction. It is not only the current distribution but also the resulting magnetic field, which is in our interest. In the context of PCBs, one can encounter different behaviors, depending on how the traces are arranged. Especially by the skin effect, it is very important how are the dependencies on frequency, shape and material properties. There is also a shielding effect which can be very useful when the skin effect is present. A final discussion should round out the picture of the effects and their impacts. Let's start with a simple wire conductor in which a current is flowing. Although the arrows suggest a direct current, we assume it is an alternating current with a variable frequency. This causes a magnetic B field around the wire, which penetrates a conductive plate if there is one. This could be the case when we have a PCB and a trace on one side and a plane on the other side. And as this is an alternating magnetic field, there are induced currents in the plate, so called eddy currents. They are in the opposite direction as they affect against the cores. This means to all currents inside the blade there will be a superimposed current in reverse direction. There is another current in the same direction, but this is on the side facing away from the primary current. All the transverse currents are compensated and thus zero because they would be existing in both directions all along the conductor, except for the end and discontinuity. Imagine the conductive plane is not there, but there is a wire in the neighborhood, like it is the case in every coil or transformer. There are similar eddy currents like before on the plane. Here are some words to the skin effect. The considered object regarding this effect shall be a simple circular solid wire, which is energized by an alternating electric current. For the snapshot it is shown an arrow. The longitudinal section makes a better view to the magnetic field lines, which subtend the layer inside the copper wire. These B-field lines on the other hand cause eddy currents, which are always oriented in such a way that they work against their cause. These eddy currents weaken the primary current in the center and enhance the outer current. This way the displacement of the current density to the skin takes place. Here are the mathematical formulas. They describe how the current density decreases from the maximum value at the surface going deeper. Please be aware that these are just approximate formulas. The equivalent depth delta is the 1 divided E value, it's about 36.8%. A hollow wire with that 
thickness would have the same DC resistance like the solid wire at the regarded frequency. This delta has some dependencies, frequency, permeability and conductivity. We will have a look at all the quick field work now. Firstly I have to say that we won't assemble all the models and analyze them from A to Z. But we want to do this representatively at one example, the proximity model with two wires. Creating a new problem with the name double wire. And we can decide where to create the files. The setup of the general settings defines which module should be active, what kind of symmetry, the units and the precision. We have AC magnetics starting with a low frequency, class is plane parallel, unit is millimeters and precision is high. Now we define a border where the consideration takes place. It is a centered rectangle. and auto-zoom so that it is an optimal view. The two wire conductors have to be inserted with a certain distance. The border edges have to be marked by pressing CTRL and clicking at each side. Then right click and labeling with border for instance. We can name the outer area air. This is called Y1. And this Y2. Now let's go to the blocks properties. Air will get 1 as relative permittivity and 0 conductivity. The left wire will get the properties of copper. That means relative permittivity 1, conductivity about 56 million Siemens per meter. The current is 1 amp amps here. The same properties here in the right wire except for the current which flows in the other direction. The border must get a magnetic potential of zero in order to define a finite observation space. Don't forget to define that, otherwise you will get some unexpected results. We do mesh and problem solve. When we have a look at the picture, the colors bring out the effect, but the scale range is constrained. Look at the asymmetric current distribution in one wire. The current in phases goes a little bit closer in the wires. For our purposes and requirements it is necessary to make a better segmentation because we will have a very high gradients of current distribution in very thin conductors layers. So do the solve and refine except the proposal of Quickfield. We set the frequency at 1 MHz now.
solving again. We want to set the properties here. Setting limits and color grades. Two millions is just about the used limit here. 200 color grades is good enough for the viewing. A contour line brings up the curse of many values. This brings up the diagram. This is for viewing the table with data. You can select any desired columns. And you can refine the steps by defining the step size. If you want to process further the data by Excel or so, you can make an export as text file. Look at the adjacent surfaces of the conductors. They are reaching the maximum only. If you want to get always the same settings for the field picture, you can save the current status by this. For instance, you can change the frequency again and solve the problem. Then you can make the restore status so that you would get the same properties like scaling, color grades, measure of what the, to display and so on. This is our restore. Please notice that the picture changes now because of the different scaling. We change to 1 MHz again to get more spectacular results. And solve again. We want to have the same settings. Please keep in mind how the current distribution is now, because we want to change the current direction in the right wire now. The current density is concentrated here. Setting the right wire in the same block label will cause same current directions in both wires, different from before. 
once more south. And restore status. As you can see now we are having the reverse situation from before. The current emphasis diverges from the centers. Now we are coming to all the other models. I will explain them in a short summary and will solve them if there are very spectacular results only. This model consists of a plane and two traces for analyzing the behavior of the proximity effect in a PCB. This is the ground plane. This is a trace. And this is a second trace. Block labels are just simple, but there are two different conductor labels. So you can split into two opposite current directions. Here we have the trace properties. And here are the plane properties. This is just air with no conductivity. Next model is a flat conductor. It's enclosed by a circular bottle. You can see how the mesh density is much higher in and around the conductor. This is air and this is copper again. A half tube is the next model. It consists just of air and one conductor. And don't forget the edge label like in every model. If you solve this, you can expect some current even inside and especially at the edges. This is a model for showing material dependencies. To make this possible you do need different material properties which can be assigned to the round conductor. For instance, kind of steel with its lower conductivity but higher permeability. And a material called high perm with the same product of conductivity and permeability like copper. Now some shielding models are here. The first one with a hermetic closed shielding cabinet around the wire.
This is the normal current leading conductor. In opposite to this conductor, which is the shielding, this has to be without any current and set to zero voltage instead. The current density in automatic scale. You can see some current in the shielding wall. And with the fixed scale by restoring status again. This was at a frequency of 100 Hz. We increase frequency to 10 kilohertz now. Look at this, the skin effect is much more distinctive and the current penetration into the shielding wall is less. You can see it better with a stretched scale. Next model, a shielding arrangement too. This one is open shielding. All the properties are the same like before. Except for the shielding system itself, it is just an open wall this time. Current density is similar to the model with closed shielding. Please compare the flow of the B field lines. This nice picture represents the H strength. A restore status can be done by the same way. Some shadow zones can be observed here. This is a solid wire again. We can show here the whole thing again and make a comparison between different frequencies, while material is always the same. For this comparison it is necessary, like mentioned before, to make a restore status so that you can force the defined scaling. Increasing frequency to 1 MHz. This is the restore status process again and all of a sudden we are having a different picture.
Last not least, there is a tube as a conductor, but generally it is always the same like before. Now let's go to the discussion of the results. We have made some diagrams of the exported data in QF. The diagram here shows the current amplitude along a plane conductor, which leads back the current to the source, while a narrow trace provides the current to the load. Please be aware that most of the following diagrams do have a logarithmically scaled vertical axis. For a low frequency of 100 Hz, the whole plane carries almost the same current density, except a very slight hump in the center. At higher frequencies, the reverse current in the plane is concentrated in the neighborhood of the trace. This is the same situation, regular current in the trace and reverse current in the plane, all at the frequency of 1 kHz. But the shown measure is p-field. We can see at the edges of the small trace the total p-field has two maxima, while the x amount just has one maximum in the center. Remember that the p-field measurement was at height of 2 mm, when zero is the center between the trace and the plane. Here we can make a comparison between the same situation with the trace and the plane, and on the other hand two traces with the same distance. Both cases are still two currents in the reverse direction of each other. With separate traces there is no considerable proximity effect, so the B-field makes a better spread. The maximum is in between the two traces, again in the height of 2 mm. The B-field magnitude is not dependent on frequency, but the induced voltage would be. These are the current densities on a solid conductor for three different frequencies. Material is copper. The uneven course of the highest frequency is most likely caused by some inaccuracy, and this again caused by the finite segmentation. If you take a hollow wire, a tube, instead of a solid wire, the current density behavior deviates from before. In a small range of a certain ratio of wall thickness to delta, the resistance will be lower than for the solid wire at the same frequency. By the way, if we had area cores for the horizontal axis instead of distance x, then the area underneath the curve is the same like the whole current we forced through the conductor, equivalent to the integral. Unlike the tube behavior, a flat bar as a conductor provides absolute symmetric current distribution. That means the skin effect is equal on both sides. Along the edges there are tremendously higher peaks than along the whole surface. Similar behavior is given for a half tube. Even if the inner surface is not representing the same current density. We have not shown the B field in the solid rod yet. In the center there are always the same amounts of field line directions in each direction. Thus it goes back to zero. Below the level of 10 high minus 10, there must be the mathematical resolution limit, so the curse is kind of humpy. But at the surface it seems to start with the same level of B-field, independently on frequency. Let us have a look at the material dependency. It is conspicuous that copper and the hypermaterial are identical, 
This is because of the same product of permeability and conductivity. A very low conductivity on the other side causes a very deep current distribution, thus a very high value for the equivalent depth. See magenta curve. A very important issue of the skin effect is its shielding capabilities. A wire is drained by an alternating current of different frequencies. Then we measure the H strength along the distance, even beyond the shielding wall. As expected, the highest H strength is in the closest area of the wire itself. This is because of the reciprocal X dependency. As soon as it penetrates into the shielding wall, which is of copper, the current density depends on the frequency again, like it is explained above. Similar, the H strength decreases with the depth too. The current density is the lowest at the averted site, and thus the H strength is the lowest. Until this close area of the shadow side of the shielding wall, both situations are similar. When the shielding wall is open or when it is closed all around the wire. When we go further away from the wall, the closed shielding makes the reciprocal X cause again, while the open shielding allows the H strength to increase again. This is most likely because of the effect of the open sites. This is a final discussion and conclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention.